and it's Sunday morning. We'll get into another story here. And without hesitation, I said, then I quit. And I didn't even realize I said it till after it was kind of out of my mouth. Today we're going to stack what I had split up of that white oak from the other day where I kind of messed up my splitter and if you want to see that all you have to do is go back and it was the last video that I made prior to this one it's titled another epic splitter failure I believe um, but since we're stacking and it's Sunday morning we'll get into another story here and I think what I'm gonna do is share how I ended up self-employed <clears throat> In the last video, if you haven't watched that one, I talked about my kids and how my youngest son was able to kind of battle through the fact that he was born without a diaphragm and he only had a 10% chance to live. So if you wanted to go watch back that and listen to that story, that's the first Sunday stack story. You can find it in a playlist at the bottom of the page there, or the channel page. Um, anyway, so kind of have to piggyback off the last story. And my wife and I had a kid right out of high school, and my cousin had a construction company that I was working at. And we did a lot of stuff, actually. Kind of jack of all trades, master and none for a little bit. Uh, we did a bunch of siding, trim work. Just general carpentry stuff. Um, and then we started uh, doing pole wall foundations with Simon's forms, so steel forms. And... Just your regular concrete work, everyday concrete type stuff, pouring floors, building foundations. Uh, it was hard work. We had a great crew. Um, I really, really liked that job. And what happened as time went on, the, uh, the housing market took a crash around the country for anybody who's older than me you'll know that 08 the housing market crashed pretty hard and it actually was really bad here we went from in 07 we did I think it was 46 new home foundations here in this area to in 2008 we did if I remember right it was three um, but growing up in a family who is willing to do what it takes to get work my cousin found us a bunch of work out in North Dakota in the oil field building buildings there the oil boom was just kind of starting to happen, and there was nobody out there to do any type of construction type work. Let's hit that with the axe. So we went out there, and we had work immediately. We were on jobs, and people were showing up, and 
wanted us to come do stuff at their house that they'd been waiting for three, four years for um, locals to get at. So from 08 to 2012, I worked on the road <clears throat> in western North Dakota. We kind of based out of Dickinson, North Dakota. That was like our home base. And then uh, the guy that we were working for, his name was Carl. He had a place in Richardson, North Dakota that we stayed at, a trailer house. And we built buildings for companies to do all kinds of things in the oil field. Um, rat hole services, roustabouts, um, just anything to do with the oil field. We we were building big buildings for. And then the farmers were doing really well in that area too because they had land with oil on it. Not to mention the fact that commodity prices were up pretty high too. So they were making money being farmers and some of them were getting six, seven hundred barrels a day on oil, up to a thousand barrels a day off of their properties. And uh, each month they were getting huge royalty checks. So they were building buildings also. So we were kind of back and forth between working on farmers places and building buildings for companies in the oil field. And um, my oldest son was born in 03 and my youngest son was born in 06. And we started working on the road in 08. And I was kind of getting sick of being on the road mostly because my family was growing up and I wasn't around. This is hard to deal with. Um, so I kind of started looking for a job, doing something different. And the manuf the area I live in is huge manufacturing area. There's a lot of companies that package things like for Coca-Cola and Kellogg's, big big companies like that. We have a an industry here that caters to those big companies building packaging machines. So the area's got a lot of manufacturing companies and I was able to get a job with a small company I'm a family owned company. I think there was 20 employees total. And I, I worked there until 2020. But what happened while I was there is I still, I loved, I loved the construction Part. I love to build things and my wife had me build her a headboard hmm. so my, my wife had me build her a headboard and that turned into a headboard for my sister-in-law. And then that turned into a couple of things for one of her friends. And I did some more work for some of my friends. And that all kind of started about 2015. 
So a couple years into it, and I was just kind of working for just some spending cash more than anything. And not charging anybody anything, you know, I mean, just enough money to kind of cover material costs more than anything. And then the spring of 2020, before all the crap kind of hit the fan that everybody's aware of now, I, I got about six months worth of work. And just doing the Saturday, Sunday thing, it was probably more like a year's worth. But I had a bunch of vacations saved up from work, and we worked four tens. And then Fridays were optional. So what I was doing is, in order to try catch up on all that work that I had taken, which I'm probably shouldn't have. I was not working Fridays because they were optional. And then I was taking Thursday off vacation day. So Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I would put my 10 hours in at the manufacturing plant and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday I would try and knock out some of that small jobs that I had taken and, and what I was doing is I was just building kind of like rustic furniture, real rough stuff, um, kind of the uglier as far as fine comfort carpentry I could make it the more people liked it. It was just kind of the style. So, that's what I was doing Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then the next week would come around and I would just kind of repeat that. And that was going on for a while. And then one day, I was kind of just thinking to myself that I, I'm not catching up, and I had always been joking with my wife that I had wanted to kind of just do this full time, but we both knew that, for one, I didn't charge what I would need to charge in order to actually make a living, and then every time that I thought about it, I never even remotely close thought that I could have enough work. But we were always kind of talking about it and I was joking about it and she wasn't in favor of it because just like what happened in 08 could very easily happen again and the work just kind of dries up. But one day I don't know, it was probably six or seven weeks into me taking those Thursdays off. The boss called me in to the office and was like, hey, what do you keep taking all these Thursdays off for? Because we were real busy. You know, I was always willing to put in overtime and all of a sudden I was knocking out all Thursdays and not putting any overtime. And I just, I explained the situation just like I explained to you guys that I had got all this work and I was trying to catch up on it. And they were like, well, you can't, you can't keep doing this. And I said, all right, I'll try to figure something out. Went home and kind of thought to myself, I'm like, well, maybe if I take one month's leave and just work 14 hours a day. I'll get enough of it knocked out and just explain to these other people that 
the situation that it's all on the side and I'll get to it when I can. So I went in and asked for that one month leave i just as fully honest I thought that they would give it to me and they said no and without hesitation I said then I quit and I didn't even realize I said it till after it was kind of out of my mouth and the boss said, well, you can't quit. We, we need you here. And I said, well, then I need to have that month's leave. No pay, I'll, and then I'll come back. So I don't need the, the money because I have the money from doing this side business. And they said, no. And I said, well, then I quit, and I'm out of here. It's my two weeks' notice. And that's how I ended up becoming self-employed and I came home that night and told my wife that same story that I just shared with you guys and she didn't believe me because I had said several times that I had quit after a bad day or whatever just joking around and I said no I actually I did quit this time and she got all worried and that was almost four years ago to the day that that happened I haven't looked back since I haven't felt like that was a bad decision and every day Obviously, it's a new challenge, but I feel like I'm in a great spot. Um, one of the things that that company did for me, which I'm greatly appreciative of, is that they allowed me to coach football. Most places wouldn't let you take that time off in the fall because um, I got to be at practice every day. And that's another reason why. Trying to find a job at this point would be difficult too because you'd have to have an employer that would be willing to, to deal with me being gone every day in August through November um, at 3 o'clock. So, well, here we are. I got all that stacked up. Um, about six feet straight up six feet by four feet so that's well over two-thirds of a cord two face cords two ricks whatever you want to call it i can call it face cord because i live in the midwest and that's what we call it so thanks for being here guys hope you enjoyed that story see you next time